Hi friends, once again welcome back to my channel Mugambika Nursing. Friends here we are discussing questions for RRB Nursing Officer Exam Preparation. Here we are discussing previous year questions and answers. In the previous video we discussed 50 questions. Here we can see from question number 51. Some diuretics causes excessive amount of electrolyte to be excreted. Which electrolyte is most often associated with diuretics? Options. Option A, sodium. Option B, potassium. Option C, chloride. Option D, bicarbonate. The electrolyte which is associated with diuretics is potassium. Option B is the correct answer. Diuretics are loop diuretics, osmotic diuretics, potassium sparing diuretics and thiazide diuretics. Loop diuretics and thiazide diuretics cause hypokalemia and potassium sparing diuretics cause hyperkalemia and osmotic diuretics cause hyponatremia. Hyponatremia means and the next question name of the test used to test the patency of a radial artery options option A Blanche test option B Allen's test option C Babinski test option D Green's test patency of the radial artery can Test by using Allen's test. Option B is the correct answer. And the next question, question number 53. A client requiring the highest possible concentration of oxygen therapy in short time will need which one of the following delivery system? Options. Option A, mask with a reservoir bag. Option B, face tent. Option C, injury mask. Option D, nasal cannula. Here the question is. A patient need highest concentration of oxygen in a short time. So we can deliver the oxygen through mask with a reservoir bag. Option A is the correct answer. And the next question, which one of the following is an example of intentional tort? Options, option A, false imprisonment. Option B, breach of duty. Option C, negligence. Option D, malpractice. Which is an example of intentional tort. Correct answer is false imprisonment. Option A is the correct answer. An intentional tort means is a willful act which violates the patient right. Or purposefully or knowingly doing harm to the patient. That is known as intentional tort. Move on to the next question. Question number 55. The nurse is unable to locate the client popliteal pulse during a routine examination. The next step is to options. Option A. Check for a femoral pulse. Option B. Check for pedal pulse. Option C. Take the blood pressure on that thigh. Option D. Check for carotid pulse. Our question is a nurse is doing routine examination to the patient and she is unable to take the popliteal pulse for the patient. Then what she will do the next? So she will check the Pedal pulse. Option B is the correct answer. Check for pedal pulse. Move on to the next question. 56th question. The needle stick safety and prevention act was passed in the year. Options. Option A. December 1998. Option B. November 2000. Option C. November 2002. Option D. April 2010. Needle stick safety and prevention act was passed in the year. November 2000. Option B is the correct answer. Move on to the next question. Question number 56. A nurse plan to administer 3 ml intramuscular injection. Which muscle is least desirable to use for the administration of this medication? Here the question is. A nurse want to give 3 ml injection. IM injection. Intramuscular injection. So here the question is. Which muscle is least desirable or least suitable for this injection? And the correct answer is, it is deltoid. Option B is the correct answer. And the next question, after cardiac arrest, irreversible brain damage occurs within. Options, option A, 2 to 4 minutes. Option B, 1 to 4 minutes. Option C, 4 to 6 minutes. Option D, 8 to 10 minutes. Irreversible brain damage occurs within 4 to 6 minutes after cardiac arrest. Option C is the correct answer. And the next question, the nasal cannula delivers oxygen at the flow rate of options. Option A, 2 to 6 liters per minute. Option B, 4 to 6 liters per minute. Option C, 5 to 6 liters per minute. And option D, 7 to 8 liters per minute. Our question, the nasal cannula delivers oxygen at the flow rate of 2 to 6 liters per minute. Option A is the correct answer. 
Move on to the next question. Question number 60. The normal fat content present in this tool is. Options. Option A. 2 to 4 grams per 24 hours. Option B. 9 to 10 grams per 24 hours. Option C. 5 to 6 grams per 24 hours. Option D. 7 to 8 grams per 24 hours. Question. The normal fat content in stool is 2 to 4 grams per 24 hours. Option A is the correct answer. Move on to the next question. Question number 60. When the body temperature alters at regular intervals between the period of fever and period of normal and subnormal temperature, the condition is termed as options. Option A. Remittent fever. Option B. Intermittent fever. Option C. Relapsing fever. Option D. Crisis. Here the question is the body temperature changes at regular intervals between the pe period of fever and period of normal and subnormal temperature. This is known as intermittent fever. Option B is the correct answer. First option, a remittent fever. Remittent fever means there is a variation of temperature more than 2 degree between morning and evening. But it does not reach as the normal. Okay, not coming normal. That is known as a remittent fever. And relapsing fever mean, means there is a brief febrile period followed by one or more days of normal temperature. That is known as a relapsing fever. Last option, crisis. Crisis is sudden return of normal temperature from a very high temperature within a few hours or days. That is known as crisis. Move on to the next question. Pain elicited on palpation of the right lower quadrant of the abdomen indicate options. Option equivalent sign. Option B. Robin sign. Option C. Allen sign. Option D. Turner sign. Our question. Pain while palpation on the right lower quadrant of the abdomen indicate a Robin sign. Option B is the correct answer. A Robin sign is one of the manifestation of appendicitis. Move on to the next question. During percussion, an extremely dull sound produced by dense tissue is known as options. Option A. Resonance. Option B. Dullness. Option C. Flatness. Option D. Timpani. The dull sound produced by dense tissue is while doing percussion is known as flatness. Option C is the correct answer. Move on to the next question. The test to determine the average plasma glucose concentration of a client for past 2-3 months is options. Option A. Fasting blood sugar test. Option B. Postprandial blood sugar test. Option C. Glycosylated hemoglobin test. Option D. Gamma glutaronyl transferase test. The average plasma glucose concentration for a client for 2-3 months can be determined by glycosylated hemoglobin test. Option C is the correct answer. Move on to the next question. A staff nurse is explaining mammography screening to a patient who is reluctant to have the diagnostic test. Which level of prevention the diagnostic test reflect? Options. Option A. Primary prevention. Option B. Secondary prevention. Option C. Tertiary. Option D. Primordial prevention. Here the question is, a nurse is explaining mammography screening test to the patient, but the patient is unwilling for the diagnostic test. So, this diagnostic test reflect which level of prevention? It is secondary prevention. Option B is the correct answer. Early diagnosis, case detection, screening of the case, screening test and all coming under secondary prevention. Move on to the next question. Question number 66. The individual's red blood cells contain a number of proteins called Options. Option A. Antigen. Option B. Antibodies. Option C. Agglutinin. Option D. Agglutinogens. And the correct answer is, it is antigen. Option A is the correct answer. And the next question, question number 67. Drugs which help in the expulsion of gas from the intestinal tract is called. Options. Option A. Carminative. Option B. Cathartics. Option C. Antiemetics. Option D. D. Chickens. Drugs which help in the expulsion of gas from GI tract is called carminative. Option A is the correct answer. Move on to the next question. The pressure within the autoclave during sterilization is options. Option A 10 pounds per inch. Option B 15 pounds per inch. Option C 25 pounds per inch. Option D 5 pounds per inch. And the correct answer is it is option B. 15 pounds per inch. 
on to the next question methotrexate belongs to the group of options option a alkylating agent option b antipyrimidines option c antipurines option d antifolates methotrexate belongs to the group of antifolates option d is the correct answer Move on to the next question. Question number 7D. Ask us bodies are characteristics of options. Option A. Thyroiditis. Option B. Rheumatic fever. Option C. Rheumatoid arthritis. Option D. Chorea. Ask us bodies are the features of a rheumatic fever. Option B is the correct answer. Move on to the next question. Which of the following is a DNA virus? Options option A hepatitis A virus, option B hepatitis C virus, option C hepatitis B virus, option D hepatitis E virus. Among this, which hepatitis virus is DNA? And the correct answer is option C hepatitis B virus. Move on to the next question. Question number 72. Sodium potassium pump is an example of options. Option A diffusion, option B osmosis, option C active transport, option D facilitated diffusion. And the correct answer is option C, active transport. Sodium potassium pump is an example of active transport. On to the next question, the etiology for malignant hypothermia is options. Option A, drug induced fever. Option B, injury to hypothalamus. Option C, CNS dopamine receptor blockade. Option D, inhaled general anesthetics. Among this option, which is the cause for malignant hypothermia it is inhaled general anesthetics option d is the correct answer on to the next question which of the following is a neurohypophyseal hormone options option a antidiuretic hormone option b prolactin hormone option c luteinizing hormone option d growth hormone question which among the following is a neurohypophyseal hormone it is antidiuretic hormone option a is the correct answer Move on to the next question. Question number 75. The early manifestation of hyperkalemia seen in ECG is options. Option A. Widening QRS complex. Option B. Absent P wave. Option C. Prolonged PR interval. Option B. Told peak T wave. ECG changes in case of hyperkalemia is told peaked T wave. Hyperkalemia means increased serum potassium level. The normal serum potassium level is 3.5 to 5.1 milli equivalent per liter. Hyperkalemia means the serum potassium level is exceeds 5.1 milli equivalent per liter. And the ECG changes in hyperkalemia is tall peaked T wave, flat P waves, widened QRS complex and prolonged PR interval. Today we discuss the next 25 questions. Remaining 25 questions are there that we can see in the next video. If it is useful for studies, please share my videos to your friend circle.